on World News Tonight. Trump on deadline. Deadline looms for Trump's legal team to respond to an attempt to limit what he can share about this case. Deadly derailing. Dozens dead and several others injured following a train derailment in Pakistan. Glacial flooding. Officials issue emergency declaration as glacial break causes major flooding in Alaska. Scrap to sculptures. Tunisian artists reflect everyday life in sculptures made from scrap. This is Adhaderna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and you are watching World News. We begin in Pakistan where at least 30 people have been killed and 100 others injured after a train derailed. It was carrying over 1,000 passengers and was reportedly travelling at normal speed. The cause of the crash is being investigated. An all too common sight in Pakistan, the twisted wreckage of another fatal rail crash. The passenger train was en route from the southern city of Karachi to Rawalpindi when it came off the rails. Many of those on board were trapped when some of the carriages turned on their sides. Locals rushed to the scene to help. We heard an explosion. Then we got here and we saw carriages were lying here and there. We started rescuing the injured people, including children and old people. They were in bad condition. Some of them had broken hands and legs, so we did what we could. Emergency services quickly arrived and began pulling the dead and injured from the wreckage and transporting them to a nearby hospital. Officials said children are among the victims. The government has promised answers. Prime Minister Shibaz Sharif has directed all the relevant departments to take all the necessary actions. He's ordered a thorough investigation and has promised he will reveal the reasons for this accident. But this is just the latest in a string of deadly train crashes in Pakistan. In the last 10 years alone, more than 300 people have been killed in collisions and derailments across the country. The state-owned railway dates from the 19th century and many of its systems have not been modernised. Lax safety standards have also been blamed on corruption and mismanagement. During a Supreme Court tribunal in 2020, the then Chief Justice called the railway the most corrupt state institution in Pakistan and said every passenger was in danger. Violence has spiralled in the ever-sensitive Israel-occupied West Bank. The Israeli forces have gunned down three Palestinians in the region and Hamas has issued a bleak warning, vowing revenge. A weekend of violence in Israel and the West Bank. <laughs> Israelis on Sunday buried a security officer who died after being shot by a Palestinian on a street in central Tel Aviv a day earlier. The suspected shooter was then shot dead by a municipal patrol officer, according to Tel Aviv's mayor. A statement from the Israeli police said the shooter was a 27-year-old resident of the Palestinian town of Jenin in the occupied West Bank. The Palestinian militant group Hamas praised the attack but did not take responsibility. The U.S. State Department condemned it and called it terrorism. Also on Sunday, Israeli security forces shot dead three Palestinian militants in the occupied West Bank, drawing threats of revenge by Palestinian militant factions. The Israeli police said in a statement that special forces had thwarted a group from the Jenin refugee camp on their way to carry out an attack. A spokesperson for Hamas said the shooters would not escape paying the price for their crimes. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu praised the security forces. That followed the death of a Palestinian teen Friday who was killed in an attack by Israeli civilians on a Palestinian village in the West Bank. Israeli police detained two settlers in the incident near Burqa village. According to Palestinians, they were part of a group that threw rocks, torched cars, and when confronted by villagers, shot a 19-year-old dead and wounded several others. The U.S. condemned this as terrorism as well in sharpened language that appeared to reflect U.S. frustration with surging violence in the occupied West Bank 
under Israel's hard-right government. According to Israel's army radio, the rate of attacks by settlers or their supporters against Palestinians in the West Bank has more than doubled this year compared to 2022. More court days ahead for former U.S. President Donald Trump as a federal judge has ordered him to respond to special counsel Jack Smith's requests for protective order before legal deadline set on Monday. The order is in relation to the indictment brought against Trump by Smith over his alleged criminal efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election. Tonight, after a federal judge denied his request for a three-day delay, former President Donald Trump is less than 24 hours away from yet another crucial legal deadline. By 5 p.m. tomorrow, he must respond to special counsel Jack Smith's request for a protective order. Smith's team pointing to Trump's social media use and arguing Trump might use it to disclose evidence or even intimidate witnesses in the January 6th case. Trump, who has pleaded not guilty, remaining defiant in South Carolina last night, running on the indictments. I consider it a great badge of honor because I'm being indicted for you. Trump's own former vice president and current primary rival, Mike Pence, who could be a key witness in this case, growing more vocal about his experiences after the 2020 election. Frankly, the day before January 6th, if memory serves, they they came back, as lawyers did, and said, we want you to reject votes outright. This, this, they were asking me to overturn the election. I had no right to overturn the election. Part of the special counsel's argument is that people close to Trump told him squarely he lost the election. Trump's former attorney general, Bill Barr, saying today that he would be willing to testify to that under oath. Coup hit Niger is undaunted as the deadline expires. Niger's coup leaders have closed the country's airspace after rejecting an ultimatum from West African states to reinstate this post-president Mohamed Bazoum or risk military intervention. ECOWAS was not said what his next steps would be or when exactly its deadline expired. Residents in Niger's capital took over roundabouts and road intersections on the way to the presidential palace Saturday night into Sunday early hours. They were supporting the Niger military junta and undaunted by the threat of military intervention by West Africa's regional bloc as its ultimatum for the country's coup leaders to reinstate the president expires. This demonstrator says he believes France is behind the Economic Community of West Africa, or ECOWAS, and want to attack the country. Another demonstrator says that, quote, the people of Niger have understood that these imperialists want our demise. The junta has said it will not cave in to external pressure to stand down. The July 26th power grab is the seventh coup in West and Central Africa in three years. It has rocked the Western Sahel region. Defense chiefs of the ECOWAS agreed on military action, including when and where to strike, if the detained President Mohamed Bazoum was not released and reinstated by Sunday. ECOWAS did not respond to a request for comment on what its next steps would be, or when exactly on Sunday its deadline expires. The bloc's military pledge has triggered fears of further conflict in a region already battling a deadly Islamist insurgency. Meanwhile, Italy said on Sunday it had reduced the number of troops it has in Niger to make room in its military base for civilians who may need protection. A military plane took off from Niamey and landed in Rome late on Saturday with 65 Italian soldiers as well as 10 US soldiers. That's according to the Italian Defence Ministry. Niger's former colonial power France said on Saturday he would support regional efforts to overturn the coup without specifying if that included military assistance. Any military intervention by ECOWAS could be complicated by a promise from juntas in neighbouring Mali and Burkina Faso to come to Niger's defence if needed. Bazoum's Prime Minister Umadou Mamadou said on Saturday in Paris that the ousted regime still believed a last-minute agreement was possible. Now over in Alaska, where major flooding has caused homes and debris to fall into the water after release of water from a glacier-dimmed lake. 
Tonight, the dramatic moment a massive house collapses into this river in Alaska. We were just watching the, the, the banks just slowly erode, and all of a sudden the whole roof and everything just came down. Watch as the raging rapids of the Mendenhall River erode the banks in Juneau, triggering the destruction. This giant tree toppling into the rushing water before being swept downstream. Officials tonight issuing an emergency declaration, blaming the flooding on the rapid melting of the Mendenhall Glacier. Experts say Alaska is warming at twice the rate compared to the rest of the country. That warming contributing to this unprecedented flooding event. This is a 1% to a 0.2% chance of this type of flood taking place at any given time. So this is a very rare event. The Mendenhall Glacier considered the region's crown jewel, drawing thousands of tourists each year. We'll be back with more world news of this short commercial break. Welcome back. Cricketer turned politician Imran Khan has urged his supporters to stand up for their rights and peacefully protest in his detention. The former Pakistan Prime Minister has been jailed for three years for charges he says is politically motivated. A police convoy carried Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan from his home in Lahore on Saturday. That's according to a video released by his party PTI. He was arrested after a court sentenced him to three years in prison for illegally selling state gifts. Khan's denied wrongdoing and in this pre-recorded video address also released by his party, he asked his supporters to peacefully protest. I have only one appeal, he said. Don't sit silently at home. I'm struggling for you and the country, he added. The arrest potentially bars the opposition leader from contesting an upcoming election. 70-year-old Khan is a former cricket star who went on to forge a political career and who was prime minister from 2018 to 2022. Legal experts say the guilty verdict could eliminate Prime Minister Shibaz Sharif's greatest rival in a national election expected to be held in November. The arrest is the latest in a series of blows that have weakened Khan's political standing after he fell out with Pakistan's powerful military and his party splintered. Police surrounded Khan's residence in Lahore, but there were no immediate signs of unrest in the hours after his arrest, unlike last May. Khan's political party said in a statement it had already filed another appeal to the Supreme Court earlier on Saturday. Lawyers for one of the main parties in Pakistan's ruling coalition cheered as the court handed down the sentence. The conviction came a day after Pakistan's high court temporarily halted the district court trial. It was not immediately clear why the trial had proceeded despite the high court decision. The country's information minister said that Khan's arrest followed a full investigation and proper legal proceedings in a trial court. On tonight's segment on the road to White House, we bring you the updates on the new conspiracy theories suggested by the GOP hopeful Vivek Ramaswamy. He implied that U.S. involvement in the war in Ukraine may be because of President Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden. Let's take a look. Republican President candidate Vivek Ramaswamy put forth a conspiracy theory suggesting that Hunter Biden may be the reason the U.S. is currently aiding Ukraine as the nation battles a Russian invasion, tying the war to Hunter's controversial foreign business dealings, adding that likely Hunter Biden's past dealings with Ukraine are somehow involved in the current military crisis. During a campaign in Iowa, Ramaswamy appeared to be referring to an alleged bribe involving the president and his son. House Oversight Committee Chair James Comer has claimed he was told by by a whistleblower whose claims are uncorroborated about a tip regarding a $5 million payment from a foreign nation to Joe Biden, then the vice president, and a family member relating to the exchange of money for policy decisions. Republicans later identified the other family member as Hunter Biden, who at the time was an attorney and a board member of Bursama, a Ukrainian energy company. The White House has denied the president had any participation in his son's business dealings. Russia invaded Ukraine in the winter of 2022, years after Biden left Bursama's board. Since the invasion, the Biden administration and Congress have given billions of dollars of aid to Ukraine, even though polls show the public is split over sending more money and Ramaswamy, who is crisscrossing Iowa in a bid to win the Republican nomination, has been highly critical of U.S. foreign policy in Ukraine on the trail. 
It looks like the possibility of a debate between California's Gavin Newsom and Florida's Ron DeSantis, two governors on the opposite ends of political spectrum, may still be a way off. DeSantis, a Republican who is running for president, said he is game to square off with the Democrat and his team laid out concept parameters for the verbal bout. To which Newsom spokesman responded by slamming the proposed rules, calling it a joke. However, there was one source of common ground. The DeSantis camp reportedly pitched Georgia and Iowa for the location, while Newsom also proposed the Peach State in addition to Nevada and North Carolina. They both conquer on basic rules such as having the moderator be the only individual asking questions, keeping speaking time divided up evenly between the two, and having the moderator prevent interruptions. Now, a major scientific breakthrough was achieved by a group of scientists at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory as they have achieved net energy gain in a nuclear fusion reaction for the second time since the historic breakthrough last year in the quest to find a near limitless, safe and clean source of energy. U.S. scientists have repeated what appears to be an energy breakthrough, a nuclear fusion reaction that gave off more energy than went into it for a second time after months of near misses. Fusion is a reaction that takes place in the sun and is hoped replicating that could one day lead to a source of near limitless and clean energy. Scientists at the California-based Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory say they repeated the feat in an experiment in late July after they achieved it first in December using lasers. But this time, a lab spokesperson said the scientists were able to produce an even higher energy yield, but that final results are still being analyzed. The experiment is trying to replicate fusion through so-called nuclear ignition. It involves focusing a laser on a target fuel to fuse two lighter atoms, such as hydrogen, to form heavier elements and in the process release a burst of energy. The December trial generated around 3 megajoules of energy output after the laser delivered a little over 2 megajoules to the target. The U.S. Energy Department called it a major scientific breakthrough decades in the making, adding it will pave the way for advancements in national defense and the future of clean power. While experts outside the lab have applauded the advancements since December, they told much more work is needed to make fusion power commercially viable. Welcome back. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Italy's Coast Guard recovered two bodies and rescued 57 people off the southern island of Lampedusa following two shipwrecks. Hiroshima's mayor, Kazumi Matsui, urged the abolition of nuclear weapons as Japan marked the 78th anniversary of the U.S. atomic bombing on Sunday. Firefighters brought under control a wildfire in central Portugal's Castelo Branco area, which ravaged over 17,000 acres of forest and undergrowth. Seoul has been chosen to host a global Catholic church event for young people, World Youth Day in 2027. Up to a million people are expected to attend the event, with the Pope himself also set to visit. Prospect Medical Holdings, a company that owns more than 170 medical facilities, reported that it took its national computer system offline after discovering a ransomware attack. That is all we have for you on World News Tonight. If you miss any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We leave you tonight in the tantalizing Tunisia where sculptures are born through waste. Thank you for watching. Good night. <laughs>